Good afternoon. Uh, those who reject the idea that, uh, that salvation is by faith alone uh, will often go to Acts chapter 8 and look at Simon, uh, the, uh, the man who practiced sorcery in, uh, that, in chapter eight, Acts chapter 8 and point to him as, the, as someone who believed but still wasn't saved. But that isn't the case. Uh, if we read here in Acts chapter 8 verse 13, we see uh, then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. This is the transitional part of the uh, book of Acts, uh, transitional uh, aspect of it. And this is where they're brought into the, uh, the church uh, through the... Um, through the apostles. Uh, for as yet uh, he was fallen upon none of them, only when they were baptized in the name of only only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Now nothing is said there that, that Simon is not part of the them there. Uh, Simon received the Holy Ghost along with the rest of the that group from Samaria. Now, uh, and verse 18, and when Simon saw that through laying of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, give me also this power that on whom, whomever I lay hands, <coughs> excuse me, he may receive the Holy Ghost. He's asking for a particular spiritual gift that he thought he could buy. Uh, but Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of, money, of God may be purchased with money. So he's at, Peter addresses the issue that he's asking for a particular spiritual gift, not his, not his, not whether he's saved or not. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. What Peter's addressing there is the fact that this, this is a man who's in, in deep sin, uh, just like Paul was dealing with the uh, young man according to incest. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gore of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Now, Peter doesn't say one word about this man being unsaved. He just points out that, this, that he is truly in a, a grip of a serious sin. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, and none of these things which I have spoken come upon me. Paul had said, uh, Let your money um, perish uh, along with thee. So he's saying, you know, uh, everything you, you hold dear was going to be destroyed. And uh, so Simon asked uh, Peter that Peter pray for him that these things don't happen to him, uh, just as the uh, uh, the man uh, who had uh, committed incest uh, repented of that sin, and Paul took uh, took off the uh, the penalty that he had placed on him, which was the sin unto death. And this is common in in, in the in Book of Corinth that the uh, many of the uh, people in the city, uh, saved people in the Corinth, were looking for those those special uh, sign gifts. Uh, like tongues, for instance, and thought they were special gifts, and um, uh, therefore they were they were bragging on those gifts as opposed to the uh, uh, other gifts that were actually uh, more edifying to the body. But the fact is, not matter nothing in there said about Simon being a lost man or didn't him not receiving the Holy Ghost. He received the Holy Ghost along with the rest of the Sumerians. What he did afterward uh, was uh, uh, get involved in a, a serious sin. On um, which he tried to buy a spiritual gift, which by his by which his name became famous in the Middle Ages, simony. Um, the fact is, is that nothing there says that he was an unsaved man. Peter doesn't address him as an unsaved man. If he was an unsaved man, Peter would have told him how to get saved. He doesn't say that. He says he must repent of his sin, or else he's in serious trouble, and in fact could even die. And uh, that was the uh, the gist of that issue. So uh, those, are, those who are trying to claim that uh, Peter believed and yet he was not saved are simply misreading uh, those, those verses in order to read what they want to read and, and ignore what they want to ignore. Uh, it says clearly that uh, Simon uh, believed uh, and he was with Thomas for a while. I think Thomas would have recognized, uh, I assume Philip, Philip would have recognized an unbeliever from a believer, I think, uh, and, uh, uh, and the... Uh, uh, his sin was asking for a gift that only uh, God and His sovereignty gives. Uh, you don't, uh, uh, you don't uh, have approbation for other people's spiritual gifts. Uh, you uh, receive the spiritual gift that God has given you, and are happy with that because every gift is equal in the body of Christ. There's no, there's no, 
there's no better or worse gifts. Every gift is equal in the eyes of God and uh, is, is just as important in the eyes of God. So the fact of the matter is, is that uh, Simon was, was truly a saved man uh, who fell into a deep, serious sin and which Peter rebuked him for and uh, which uh, P uh, then Simon turned around and asked Peter uh, to uh, pray for him that the things that Simon uh, said was going to happen to him, uh, Peter said, said was going to happen to Simon, did not happen. Amen. Thank you.